What is up, y'all? Welcome back off the bench. No more preamble needed. Let's dive in as we are talking to the man, the Super Bowl champ from Louisiana, champion of the world, uh, arguably the Super Bowl MVP, the legend himself, the LSU legend. We're talking to Devin White. Get live, 45. Three, one, great. Devin White. De Devin, what's up, man? What's going on this morning? Uh, no much, man. Just hanging out, man. Trying to make that day. Hey, so uh, have you gotten used to having the title of Super Bowl champion attached to your name in these intros yet? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say I got used to it because I mean I understand I won it, won the Super Bowl this year. So I mean it's a, it's a good uh, attachment to have. All right, Devin. So obviously, you know, we've had this conversation about what your hometown means to you. Like, I know exactly where you're from. I know how much they love you in Webster Parish. And so I want to know what it was like the first time you went back, because I know you went back pretty soon after the Super Bowl. I know you had to get to your horses. So I know you had some family fun there. But what was that reception like? I mean, it's been all love. Uh, every day, man, even to this day, like if somebody see me out, you know, because I barely be out, man. I kind of be in the woods. You know, we live on a dead-end road, so it's kind of hard to find <laughs> me. But if I'm out at the store or something, or if somebody catch me out, uh, they always congratulate me, man, let me know how proud they are. But, I mean, uh, Saturday we're having a uh, – tomorrow we're having a parade in, uh, in my hometown tomorrow. So hopefully the rain hold off a little bit for us. But uh, – at the end of the day, man, you know, they, they one of the reasons why I do what I do, man, just try to put us on the map and, you know, just try to be a uh, daily motivation for the younger generation that's coming behind me. Hey, you know that's not going to just be your hometown. That's going to be all of Webster Parish. Oh, yeah, for sure there, for sure there. <laughs> Uh, Dev, take me back to, to the beginning of the year because as soon as Brady Bruce news broke, like everybody, you know, <clears throat> thought maybe the Bucks would be uh, huge or Super Bowl favorites. Like, like y'all had a real shot. But even before then, take me back to the decision when you choose to pursue your NFL dreams, you go to the NFL, and then the next year, uh, you know, Burrow emerges, all this stuff happens, LSU wins the national championship. What was it like kind of watching that? from afar and, and 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 did that add any kind of fuel to be like you know i i want to ring like i want to be a world champion as well uh i mean yeah it was kind of difficult uh watching them win at, uh natty because i knew i was supposed to have been with them but you know my uh my journey was a little different you know uh it didn't include winning the national championship and i mean i really i really wasn't okay with that because that's what i you know that was what i thought off Wow. After when I was in college, like I worked my tail off to go get me one, or uh, they'll put my team in the be best position to get one and fail short every year. So uh, I mean that kind of lingered, but at the end of the day, when you go to a new uh, a new league, you got new goals, and you know, and the ultimate goal is to be the number one team at the end of the year. So that was still my goal. You know, I don't think it added more fuel because I knew that's what I wanted to do and that's still what I want to do yeah because as long as I'm playing that's the ultimate goal so I mean it just worked out you know it happened at the right time you know we was blessed to get Tom Brady but I mean I really so much care that we was blessed to get our defense back yes yes and, and and the defense was what ended up carrying the load there at the end Dev and and it felt like every single game you just got better and better and more dominant, and then it culminated with you shutting down a guy that I thought was unshutdownable, right? Like, I thought Pat Mahomes was unstoppable. Um, what did it, like, like, take us into your mindset. How were you able to just continually raise your level of play as the stakes got higher and higher? Well, I mean, all season long, like, I felt, I felt like I was getting better and better, you know, because, when I step on that practice field, I practice extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Like, you would think it's a game. You know, my motor never stops. Everybody on the team, like, hey, man, you know, you got to slow down. But it's like, <laughs> time to get better if I'm, you know, if I'm halfway doing it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I still was getting counted out this year with having, like, uh, great numbers and stuff. It was like, oh, he can't cover. I'm like, damn, where this coming from? Like, every time, like, every time I do something good, they find something wrong with me. So, I honed in, like, okay, I can't cover. Or whatever they say. Yeah. Now I'm finna, I'm finna show you that like my coverage is elite too. Like yeah. I gotta take it to a whole nother level. I gotta hone in on it. And I did that. And I started coming up with many more pass deflections, uh, interceptions. I did it all at the right time. Like I was in the right spot at the right time. 
And, you know, that all started with practice. And, man, we got some guys that practice extremely hard as well. And really on the offensive side, man, you watch Tom Brady and, and Antonio Brown, watch how they get out of it. Really? So, and A.B., man, he one of the hardest practice people I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, me and him real good friends. So that just kind of boosted me up even more. Like, okay, like this is where you make yourself at out here on this practice field. And the game going to really be easy because you done put in the work at uh, 100 miles per hour. So now when you get in the game, man, you're going to go 150, but you're going to do it the right way. Yeah, I, I love that, D. White, as you know. And I've got to apologize to you. Over the last, like, six years, you've been telling me about these running back skills that you had. And I saw them <laughs> at North Webster. I saw what you were able to do there. But, my man, mm. when you got the ball in your hands, when the quarterback threw it to you, I've got to admit, I think there might be a skill set there. Bro, that's stiff arm. <laughs> yeah, it's a big skill set there. I mean, the whole thing is, <laughs> hey, they need to feel some more um, pain. I had to try to inflict some pain on the uh, offense. Like, now y'all finna do what we do all night. Y'all got to try to tackle. Hey, uh, De- Devin, you probably had my favorite quote before the Super Bowl where you were kind of telling LSU fans, like, look, don't be selfish. Okay, you know, Daryl got his last year at the Chiefs. Clyde got his in college. You know, we got we got me. We got Minner, we got Lenny over here. We got some LSU boys. We need a ring as well. What what was it like, uh, not just having guys like Tom Brady, and Antonio Brown, but you know even some former LSU guys there with you uh, on the squad, getting rings for the first time together. Yeah, well, I'm gonna start with Kel. I mean, I always like looked up to Kel from my LSU days because man, Kel was a uh, man. He was set in stone at LSU. The things he did, you know, yeah. 21 tackles against Florida, like all the things that he did, all American being on the wall. So I'm I'm chasing – he's one of the people I'm chasing from LSU. And to come in and lead and have him from day one, I knew it wasn't going to be no hate, no shade. Man, Kel looked out for me from day one to day whatever we is in my second year. He's always been the ultimate teammate, but let alone the ultimate big brother to me. Like, you know, he helped me uh, – he helped my transition into the league. Like, that's what I tell people. Like, I was blessed coming into the league. You don't come into the league with somebody that you already got an existing relationship with that play the same position. That's knowing you're coming in to play right in front of them but still make sure that you are uh, equipped with everything to be the best uh, player you could be. That just speaks uh, highly of Kevin. And when I went down my rookie year, Kevin stepped in, like, and it wasn't no problem. I came back. I stepped right back in. It wasn't no problem. We kept feeding off one another. We knew, you know, two great LSU players on the team, you know, it'll go far. And then as far as having uh, Leonard on the team, shoot, when Leonard got cut, I was the first one to call. Oh, I probably man. called before any other NFL team called his agent. I was the first one to call him as soon as I seen it. And I told him, like, bro, uh, you don't got to go far to find your next team. We like three, four hours down here in the base. Like, just come <laughs> on, come on, we're going to get up. And I told him, like, man, you'll play a big part. Like, I, I, I expected an immediate impact from him, you know, but not knowing, like, you know, how things going to go with other guys. You know, Rojo was a uh, was a guy for us and was a great guy for us, but, you know, uh, he was having an up year. So it's like, all right, you can't just put Leonard in over him because, you know, we actually drafted this guy. But, you know, injuries and stuff happen, and, you know, um, Leonard gets a high hand, and it's like, okay, this is who we're rolling with. Yeah. Which I feel like, you know, fourth quarter, that's Leonard not somebody you want to tackle. Rojo as well, <laughs> so I feel like we had the best of both worlds. Just depends on who was healthy or not. And, uh, man, it all worked out well. Cause, I mean, I swear that boy got on my nerves every day in the locker room. <laughs> I was like, joking, so, like, like we were still kids. But I mean, he brought a uh, he brought an energy into the locker room that was needed as well. Man, he the ultimate teammate. He gonna joke all day. You know, he gonna um, grind on the practice field, and you know what he gonna give you when you get in the playoffs <laughs> and, the, and the Super Bowl. Wait, wait. So Dev uh, Minner actually told us we talked to him a couple weeks ago, right after the game, and he told us that when you were in high school. You were calling him, telling him, "I'm coming for your records." Is that true? Like, were you on him from like from high school times? Yeah, man. I always, uh, I always wanted to uh, finish as the number one. Whatever I did, like whoever, like whoever was the guys that was already had that recognition, like it's all right. I gotta go take it. I gotta go erase their name, and he Damn. know it. Like you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, like you, one of the most beloved Tigers, like because you did your thing. But wait till I finish my journey there, like. They're going to love me probably uh, a little bit more. But, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you got to set big goals, big uh, standards man, to uh, be the greatest, man. One of my favorite things about Devin T. Bob is how competitive he is. He yeah. helped coach my football camp for two years in a row. And if somebody would go out there, like, coaching-wise and have the obstacle course record, Devin would, like, 
come for that record. He would yeah. come for the record at my football He's camp. He's got the Jordan factor, like the last dance yeah. thing. I took that personally. That's right. Hey, hey, hey Devin, I, I've got to, uh, I've got to kind of ask you what the Super Bowl celebration in Tampa was like before we get out of here. That looked like a hell of a time. Looked like y'all were living your best <laughs> life. I mean, y'all got the trophy out there in the bay. Just kind of live. Uh, let us live through that moment real quick. What was that like? Yeah, that was probably the dopest, <laughs> dopest uh, parade I ever seen in my life, man. <laughs> like, cause I went, like, and uh, Miss Glazer, uh, Captain, when she put it together so fast, because everybody was ready to get out of there, like they was trying to have it Saturday. Right. So she made it happen Wednesday, so it was like, um, all right. So we like, we having a boat parade, man. Like, you know, how the fans going, you know, be right here on a boat, like, you know what I'm saying? So. Nobody was kind of fun though, but it was like, man, we finna do it. We the world champ. We gotta go celebrate. Like this is our victory lap. Right. So, man, we pull up at the at the um, river or whatever and see all these boats out there. It was all like, golly, like this is crazy. <laughs> so, man, it was thousands of boats out there. There was thousands of fans out there. So it kind of like this. It was all in sync. And then I seen my boy TB pull up on that uh, like two three million dollars. Two boy. million like, dollars. Yeah, we, we, we really, <laughs> We really living in the moment right now. This man got a two million dollar boat out here. Man. I'm like, this dope. Like it was, a, it was a, it was a, uh, basic. It was a perfect walk off for him, man, to be able to shine with his boat and everything. It was the perfect walk off. Bro, he threw because he wanna because he wanna roll no boat uh, at the other team he played for. I can tell you that. No, nope. no, and he threw the Lombardi like thirty feet through the air. I didn't realize how long yeah, it was in that video until I saw the side view. That was crazy. Another completion though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he know uh BA BA he ain't gonna say nothing to him, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh Dev, okay, last one here, man, before I let you go. Thanks so much for waking up with us. Uh it's been just awesome. But uh I, I, I guess look, Tom, even after the game they asked him like, you know, what's next? And he was just like, Come on, you know, I, I'm coming back. We're running it back. Uh it it's very early on, but like how mo like how motivated are you? Are you are you does does any of that go away when you get that ring? No, it's all uh, actually a feeling that you that you want that you want to feel again. Mm. Especially for me, it's something that uh, I want again. I want it fast because, like you know, you know what to do to attain it. You know how hard it is to attain it, but you know what work you got to put in. You know uh, how on point you got to be to uh, get that uh, feeling again. That's something I want again, man. That's something he done had seven times. Yeah. So he ain't in the lead, like, playing for Pro Bowls and stuff no more. He in the lead just trying to win it all. Uh, Why he got the opportunity as far as um, physical traits and things. So I'm like, hey, I'm trying to help you, help you, my guy, because you win one. You ain't the only one getting one. I know everybody always say uh, he got seven, but shit, Devin White got one. <laughs> <laughs> he can make it eight. I can make it two. Let's go, dude. Uh, Dev, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Dev, man. Uh, great job, Jake, setting that up. Uh, that was super fun. I'm like a giddy little kid. Probably came out a little aggressive. I think my energy, I might have scared him a little bit at the beginning. But uh, but thanks for D.Y. That was that was awesome. No, nah, he's great, man. He's always <clears> been <throat> great to to all of us, you know, former LSU guys and the media. He is just really, honestly, like a good person. Like a good, his, he is so beloved in his hometown because he treats everybody with respect and they all just appreciate what he's done for that area. You know what I always think about? is when things were worse at LSU after that Troy game, it was him who rallied the troops that's and turned guy, everything a, around. That's kind of a young guy. And as a young guy, and that was the turning point that eventually culminated in a national championship. Like, like make no mistake about it. And I trace that all back to that White. And you can kind of hear that in his voice right. where he was a bit like, you know, it kind of hurt to watch LSU go on and win it all. All right, so I don't think he would mind me sharing this. I had a conversation with Devin when he was making the decision to come out for the draft. Remember, he is a top five pick in the NFL draft. It was a very difficult decision. In fact, almost was yeah. looking for someone to talk him into staying at LSU. That's not just like lip service, like oh, everybody says that. We had a real deep conversation about him leaving or coming back because that's what LSU meant to him. He thought the team could be special. And he wanted to be a part of that. He wanted to finish what he started. And at the end of the day, look, we all love LSU more than anything. But when you're a top five NFL draft choice, like you have to, yes, you have to make yes, that yes. decision. You have to go. But it hurt him, and it was something that he put a lot of thought into. Well, it makes me very happy that he now got that ring. 
Uh, and the even bigger yeah, absolutely. one. Absolutely. The Super Bowl one. With the real diamonds. Of the big. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. With real diamonds. All right. Closing up hour number two next. And then we kick off Casual Friday OTB OT. Stick around. Turn off the bed.